Trolley A has a mass of 8 kilograms and is traveling at a velocity of 11 meters per second. So, okay, they didn't give us specific directions, so let's just draw Trolley A. So let's say this is Trolley A and it, it we saw was 8 kilograms and it is traveling, let's say, in that direction at 11 meters per second. Okay. A trolley B has a mass of 2 kilograms isn't, and is traveling behind trolley A. Okay, so 2 kilograms means it's a little bit smaller. Okay, there's trolley B. It is 2 kilograms and it says to be traveling in the same direction but at 14 meters per second. Okay, 14 meters per second. So obviously it's going to catch up because it's traveling faster. Okay, uh, B catches up to A and they collide. Okay, we don't know whether they get stuck together or not. All they tell us is that after the collision, trolley A is traveling at 12.9 meters per second in the same direction as before. Okay, so this is before. Afterwards, we know that trolley A is traveling at... There we go. Trolley A is now traveling at 12.9 meters per second. Okay, and I think think eventually the question might be what is hap well, what is happening to trolley 2 how fast is trolley uh, sorry not trolley 2 trolley b how far is fast is trolley b traveling at but that's not the first question the first question is calculate the momentum of trolley a before the collision okay and momentum is very easy to calculate i'm sure you agree with me it's simply mass times velocity the mass of trolley A is 8 times the velocity is 11 and I'm not even going to need a calculator I can calculate that as 88 okay kilogram meters per second that is my units okay that is for the momentum for A the second part of the question and you'll be able to fill that out I'm sure the second part of the question asks me to calculate the momentum of trolley B. Okay, so it's the momentum of trolley B. Again, no problem. We'll only take the mass times the velocity. In other words, 2 times 14. So then I get 28. Now, that means that my total uh, momentum, I mean, the total momentum before, and again, all of them are in the same direction, so there's no difference in signs, but if there were, one would have had a negative at least. But that means that the total momentum before, total initial momentum, is 88. Okay, sorry, I forgot my units there, kilogram meters per second. Okay, is... 88 plus 28 gives me what? Uh, plus 28 gives me 116 kilogram meters per second. Okay, so in the next question they asked me, calculate the velocity of B after the collision. Okay, so what is happening this time, we don't know if they got stuck together or not. So let's just assume they don't, otherwise we might run into trouble. So we have the mass of A and the velocity of A plus the mass of B times the velocity of the B is equal to, and this is initial, initial, is equal to the mass of A, which obviously didn't change, times the velocity of A changed. We know um, that afterwards it was traveling at 12.9 meters per second okay trolley A was traveling at 12.9 meters per second and we want to know what about trolley B okay the final velocity for trolley B so let's substitute in this all we know is that this whole thing we've already calculated at 116 kilogram meters per second the mass of A was 8 times the velocity of A and um, final velocity is 12.9 a plus the mass of B is 2 times the velocity is what we're trying to calculate. And this time, let's solve it and see what we get. So we get that 2B, um, velocity of B final is equal to, equal to 116 minus 
8 times 12,9. Okay, if you don't know exactly what I did there, just pause the video and make sure. Okay, divide both sides with a 2. Both sides, all of this on this side, or simplify the right hand side and then divide by 2. Okay, it's up to you. So we get that the final velocity of B is equal to, and there's our sum, 116 minus 8 times 12.9 divided by 2. What answer do we get? Okay. 116 times, uh, no not times, 116 minus 8 times 12.9. That's what we get, we get in the numerator. 12.8 divided by 2 gives me 6.4. Okay, so that gives us 6,4 meters per second. You notice that still my answer is positive, which means that it is still traveling in the same direction, okay, in its original direction. Okay, you can just say that, in its original direction. I'll only go into this one in here. Calculate the final velocity of B after the collision. And that's where we saw okay, we had two parts. We had a, a velocity of A and a velocity of B before, in other words, initial velocities for those, and then two distinct final velocities, and therefore they weren't one unit. So when I enter those values, I see that the mass of trolley A is, was 8, the mass of trolley B was 11, uh, sorry, the velocity of trolley A was 11, the mass of trolley B was 2, let me go back to my sketch just to confirm. Okay. And the velocity of B was 14. Okay. That was the original velocity. All of it positive because it was in one direction. Okay. Uh, and then we also learned that A had a final velocity. So trolley A had a velocity, um, a final velocity of 12.9. Okay. So how are we going to substitute all of that? Well, we're taking this formula and plugging everything in there. So we have 8 times 11 plus 2 times 14 is equal to, and then on the right hand side we have 8 times 12.9 plus mass of B was 2 times velocity. Again, we don't type the subscripts. So preview that looks good. Okay, and finally when we solved for V, we found that this side equaled to 116. We subtracted uh, 8 times 12 on the other side and then divided by 2. And finally we got that the velocity, the final velocity of B was equal to, I can't remember, let's see, 6.4 meters per second. Okay, 6.4, 6.4 point four meters per second preview perfect and which direction Let's see what options do they give us in the opposite direction of its original motion okay in other words was it bouncing back unknown direction downwards direction or in the direction of its original motion or upwards Okay, <laughs> obviously in the direction of its original motion. Perfect. I'm happy. How about you?